outdoor combo stream indeed bottom boy i will be honest the inspiration behind this particular thing being today's stream is the fact that we have two videos pretty much in the same general vein coming out this week we're gonna have a silver ridge peaks and golden ridge reserve hunting and fishing trip and then a Revan to the coast and i can't pronounce the thing in norway in the angler so <laughs> Revan to the coast and norway hunting and fishing trip both of which end up producing some pretty cool stuff and i just had a lot of fun it it's super chill like having a hunt where you just kind of spend some time going around hopefully try to get something good then swap and go fishing it's just such a chill vibe that i wanted to do it here on stream also i think alerts are working but they're not going to show up for me on the thing so if you renew a membership super chat whatever and i miss it feel free to yell at me <laughs> get my attention whatever it is because i don't know why they're why they're doing that thought it was a light colored skinny bear he's very very malnourished out here on yukon because we haven't hunted here in a long time that's all it is gonna prove for a car car on saturday is that what you're saying i think that's what you're saying how about them broncos and steelers eh, here we are again danny <laughs> both our teams are getting smoked dude i can't believe the steelers losing like i predicted them to win and they got killed but i can understand i can't believe the raiders won the only thing they could do last year was lose winnable games. What is the legendary this week? Okay, so the legendary on Golden Ridge Reserve is Sidewinder. That's the Lake Trout. The legendary on Norway is Spielfin. Don't know if I'm saying that right. It's the Atlantic Salmon. The two biggest legendaries are in rotation this week. Do a face reveal. Uh, I will actually have some real-life hunting content coming out, I think, on Wednesday. So I'm heading to Kentucky on Wednesday for a bow hunt. We're going down there for their archery season. Angry Wolf somewhere. Works out that was in the thumbnail. Uh, but, kind of in anticipation of that hunt coming up, I decided to finally get to editing some of the last of the 2022 footage. So we've got a real life hunt coming out on Wednesday, and then we're actually going to be doing a real life hunt on Wednesday. So lots of content coming up with that. And uh, if you didn't know, my face is in pretty much every single one of those videos. Wait, we shot him already? No big males. The one good thing is, we had the- Hello? Help. We had this thing where we killed a diamond gray wolf and maybe like a melanistic bison in early access for the hunter power pack. And then we came back and killed the same things again in the live game. So those should actually be gone now. And maybe we can get a fresh slate of animals. How's the pup? Uh, I think she's doing good. Last I saw, she was chilling on the couch with Kyla, begging for chips. Which is a pretty good life. Nice shot. Why, thank you. Looks like we managed to survive this. It is my favorite encounter. People ask me, like, what's your favorite thing to hunt in Call of the Wild? And it's this right here. When you get a whole bunch of wolves attacking, especially when you've got you know, a 7 mil with a 3 round capacity, or maybe an underpowered weapon, the 6.5 is kind of fun. Surviving those encounters, finding a way to weave between all the wolves and make those shots, I just, I really enjoy it. What's up, Angelic? Looking for a husky puppy. There was one, when we were down in Georgia, there was one that, I don't know if Kyla was looking up, or if it came up on her Facebook feed, or whatever. It was like a white husky. And, you know, had we not been like 13 hours from home, it was tempting. Uh, what map do you think we're getting in December? Good question. So let's uh, let's look here as we head down to this lake. We got, in the last two maps, Ribbon Tule Coast and Emerald Coast. Prior to that would have been New England. Prior to that was... That's another North America map. What came out in summer of... It wasn't Mississippi because that was a winter map. I actually can't remember. Rancho? It may have been. Either way, maybe we could make our way back around to North America, but I don't know that there's that many places left. I I mean, I'm still hoping for a Greenland map, but I think Asia is something to maybe keep an eye on. Asia is so lacking. Funny you say that. Great minds, I suppose. Yeah, I feel like... And there's... Like, sheep hunting and stuff in Asia is pretty big. That is another place they call the wild generally is lacking is in their sheep. I mean... We have Bighorn. 
That's kind of it. I think that'd be a good place to go. Revantuli? Oh. Wait. No, Revantuli was summer last year. The summer before that, I'm saying. What is your dream animal hunt? Caribou in Alaska, which is part of the reason that we're here on Yukon t today. The other half is going to the angler side of things. I want an Alaska map. Imagine fishing for, like, sockeye salmon, king salmon. Still have, you know, some of the trout species in the rivers and stuff. I just think that map could be amazing, and I hope we get to see it one day. Any more North America and I will detonate a nuke weapon in my room? I mean, if it's a good North America map, I'd be all over it, but the last couple of North America maps have been lacking considerably, so... Kind of fair enough. Alright. Another pack of wolves down there. Sounds like... Potentially making bison mad. I guess we'll just kind of launch a shot at that guy. Wolves are your favorite to hunt, too? They're just a lot of fun. Like, when you get that full... Pack aggression? Do we hit low? Not actually sure what happened there. It's it's a lot of fun. All right, try this again. Hey, it's looking a little more like it. No aggression, but we got that one. Hopefully, we get a Finland map in the angler. So this is just me not knowing anything about fishing over there. Would it be largely different than a Norway map, like as far as what species and stuff are there? That's fair, Bonham boy, but you can hunt in. What the heck? <laughs> I literally put an egg white wolf in the thumbnail. Are you kidding? Look at it go! It's got crazy legs there for a minute. We'll try to actually go and make a good shot on that, because that's a decent one, level 3. Anyway, um, yeah, like the sheep hunting and stuff, like I was saying, in Ibex and stuff in Asia, that's a big deal. They, they should definitely embrace that. Kyla, thank you for the 13 months as a shoosty, by the way. Welcome back. I hopefully can keep track of such alerts when they come up, because my thing doesn't want to show them. Almost looks like they want to come back this way. Let's just kind of slow up. Because I think if it's trotting at us, that's a shot we can make. I don't necessarily want to go for it trotting away. Yeah, there it is. About 200 meters away. Let it kind of sneak past these trees. I think we're going to try it. That's what your fox did? I had... What the heck else did it? Raccoon dogs, I think, recently? <laughs> that's so funny to watch. Don't do it when I'm trying to shoot you, please. And keep your head out of the way. <laughs> that is the craziest thing. I have no idea what causes that. Would you just... Goodness gracious, we got it. That was nuts. <laughs> zoomies like Shadow? Maybe that's what it is. They just... They, they decided to imitate Zoomies. Are those waves on the lake? Is that newish? Uh, this was with... The Emerald Coast update, I think. Now, it looks okay when you're close up. I think it was intentional. Far away, the water on Yukon and Hirschfelden and a couple other maps. It looks weird. I'll try to show that. Egg White had too many energy drinks. Maybe had a bunch of white monsters. It all adds up. Reminds me of the Water Buffalo Zoomie. Yeah, that's true. They used to do that. Do they still do that? I haven't seen a Water Buffalo do that in quite some time. A little gold for that guy, 300 meter double lung shot. And the more important one, nice little level three egg white. What's going on, K-Flow? Hopefully the water gets fixed. Yeah, it's it's just, it's not right at a distance. 32.08 silver, so it was double lung the first time. We were all good. Second shot, <laughs> right in the tail, just like we wanted. And I don't know necessarily that this is one that we want to tax. I think we have a 33 plus, but that is a rare. You know what? We will tax it, just in case. Really nice. Like the, the models of the egg whites, they got those blue eyes. Very, very nice models. All right, took all of 10 minutes. Already got ourselves something cool. We'll just keep on going. Gonna try to do an hour of each. So about 45, 50 minutes, we'll swap to the angler and fish on Golden Ridge Reserve, but I like what we got going on right now. So yeah, I got approved for a 2012 Suzuki Grain Vitara. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Sure, it's a little old, but it's better than my nearly 20-year-old Volvo with 400,000 kilometers. I would say, yeah, that does indeed sound like a, quite an upgrade. Congrats, man. Uh, Relic, thank you for becoming a Shoesty, by the way. Good to have you here. Welcome, welcome. 
Nice, the alerts are working, they just don't show up on my feed. Anyway, if you're not in the Discord, be sure to join that as well. Link up to YouTube, get the member roll, get all that good stuff. And enjoy the green name and emojis in chat as well. What is the difference between light, medium, and heavy jig head? Good, it must just be the sink rates. I'm gonna have to jump into the angler and look at those. Cause I'm trying to think, are there, like, is there a light jig head with the maximum hook size and also a heavy jig head with the maximum hook size or does it equate to the hook size? I can't remember 100% on that. Did they fix the Yukon population? Uh, was there something wrong with the Yukon population? Because I can't necessarily say I was aware of anything, but I'm also not aware of any fixes happening. Hawaiian map and call about the angler. That could be interesting. So we talked about, I think on Friday's stream, we streamed exclusively the angler for two hours. We talked about the potential for like fly fishing and saltwater fishing. There's, there's a lot of untapped potential in the angler still. Hawaii could be really interesting. She's got a free two out spinner and jerk bait. Nice. Are you level 40? I think that was the level I got mine at. Brewing coffee. Can I have some? Uh, same hook size. So there's a, there's a, for instance, there's a four op for light, medium, and heavy. It must just be how fast they sink then. I'm sure there are specific uses for them, but I don't know what they would be. What's up, Alan? Hello from Brazil. Welcome to man. Good to have you here. Yukon's another map that absolutely killed the naming game. Crimson Plains, Tikon Forest, just strikes a chord. Yeah, like Layton, it's got some really good ones, like Copper Rock. It's nice when they're easy to say. Rustline Ridge, you go out here, you've got like the entire regions, which of course mine's not one to show them. That's the only ones they're going to show for us. Well, I guess at least we got some good ones, because not all of them want to come up on the map. Hello there. Ooh, I totally forgot. Truehorn's bison. We should actually be like actively looking for bison then. It's not a bad one too. Spending so much time exploring in the angler, I'm shocked I'm leveling up. That is the nice thing, the way they've kind of designed it. You can gain XP and stuff like as you explore and do some of those tasks like reporting the trees that are infested or, or disease, whatever the situation is there. There's all those other things you got to do as you go along. It's a nice design. I personally, you know, pretty much do nothing but fishing every now and then. I'll click on one of those things if I see them. By the way, thanks for becoming a patron, by the way. I saw that earlier today. Spending no time on the angle. That's because you're a bean-eaten Brit. I don't know. Uh, any tips or spots for Diamond Northern Pike? Uh, what I'll tell you is, and we can, when we get into the Angler, uh, we're going to go on Golden Ridge Reserve, so if that's the specific map you're looking for diamonds of, because they are on both maps, um, we'll look on the map at specific spots. I would highly recommend joining the official The Angler Discord, though. They have spreadsheets in there with, like, all the information you could ever need. It shows the spots where diamonds tend to show up. It shows, like, the recommended or required hook sizes to catch diamonds and I, I don't even want to say required because you can catch a diamond with any size like smaller than the diamonds will hit on so for instance like you can catch a huge fish on a tiny lure just more likely you're gonna catch smaller fish they're gonna go for that before the huge fish gets there 167 for him we'll take that It's amazing I can drop something low scoring and whiff on a guaranteed diamond. It's just the way it goes. The only thing I do in life is eat beans. What is a Truax? So Truax, actually, I'm going to type it in game here so you can kind of see it anyway. Truax is spelled like this. I can't spell. <laughs> spelled like that. Stands for True Random Antler Configuration System. That's, it's just an acronym. What it means is that antlers are going to generally be unique. Whether that's in the tie length, the spread, the way that like maybe the antlers bend a little bit off the frame, you're still going to have like the same basic frames, but little nuances, little difference in the antlers, you know, compared to the old system in which there were really only like, let's say for whitetail, there were maybe like 12 different possible antler combinations. According to EW, I think there's a million with true racks. Think we should make a petition for Flinder to use a face cam? I just feel like it would be really boring. 
True revs, true random antler. Van system, I couldn't think of anything else. Uh, should I get the angler or weigh the hunter first? That's a good question. I would say it's a, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be down to personal preference and, and what you want. If you're interested in a fishing game, I think now is a good time to get into the angler. If you're unsure about, like, whether a fishing game is for you, because I, I will say, prior to the angler, there were no fishing games I ever played a lot. So I would have been kind of, like, unsure about it going in. If, if that's where you're at right now, I'd probably get Way the Hunter first, because Way the Hunter is an awesome game as well. But, yeah, I'd, hard to answer that question for you. Both are very good games. True Random Antler Variation System. That would have worked. Go fishing. We are going to go fishing in the second half of the stream. The reason I'm doing it this way, not the other way around, is... I have a feeling it would be easier to get stuck fishing for longer and only end up with a little bit of hunting, so... If we hunt for, say, an hour, maybe 45 minutes if we get bored, should have plenty of time to have some success fishing. Why don't bait casting rods support bait fishing, or am I just stupid? Um, no, yeah, they don't. Or, or you can't do float fishing with the bait casters. I'm not well versed enough in bait casting in real life to tell you why that would be the case, or if that makes any sense. My brother has a bait caster, maybe I should ask him. But I've only ever used, like, Spinning tackle and fly fishing, so I I don't know actually what the reason is. I imagine there is a reason. Is this a multiplayer map? This is single player. We did do multiplayer on a recent stream, but sticking with single player today. I don't like a webcam when he gets a T-Rex jump scare. If you get me really good, it would probably be worth watching. Got my personal best smallmouth this summer, IRL. Nice, man. Got a little thick bison track there. We'll try to follow. There was a, a sportsman's club that we belonged to when we were kids. Basically, they had this really cool thing. They had a, a big pond, not quite as big as the lake that we're here at right now. But they stocked it with all kinds of trout and stuff, and they had a whole bunch of bass in there, too. And for the first month of trout season they only let kids fish it was like 18 and under so it was a really good thing you know to help kids get into fishing in the outdoors and stuff so anyway we would go there in the summer and like early mornings the bass fishing there was amazing probably where i caught my biggest smallmouth but i imagine it's still only two two and a half pounds i never caught a really big one baitcasters have the line moves oh, okay. thanks for that i think it was danny Anyway, uh, baitcasters have the line moves back and forth that makes it hard to use the bobbers. What was the baitcaster question I can probably answer? Um, in Caldwell the Angler, you can't use like a float fishing rig. So you can't put, you know, uh, a bobber or a float on there and then tie a hook on and say put a worm on that. You can only use the float fishing rigs with the spinning tackle. I don't know if there's a reason for that. I'm guessing there is. And I was saying... You know, I, I've never used a baitcaster in real life. I don't know why that was. Skill be. issues. Thank you. I want to see a four corner state U.S. desert map. If it's anything like um, the one in the game Outdoor Adventures, I'd like it. You know, mod that spawns that T Rex? Well, if you play the Hunter Classic in. Uh, oh, that's a big one. Hold on. Gotta be 170 plus, if not 180. Not bad for a blind shot. Anyway, if you play the Hunter Classic during April Fools, sometimes it happens. How Shadow wears her video? Uh, was she supposed to make a video? She's good. Um, she had an absolute blast over at my parents yesterday. Got way too much food and too many treats, as she always does. Not bad, 178. About five shy of diamond. Pretty decent fella. That's only 1,043 kilo as well. Lots of room to get a bunch bigger. How's Carlos? I haven't seen Carlos in quite some time. I have not been back to Te Aoroa. Other than that brief little thing where we went and shot that albino feral goat, I haven't touched that map since. Most baitcasters can't use that light of weight. Tackle is the reason it would back 
backlash every time. I don't... I, I'm not fully grasping it, but... It answers the question well enough that I... Like, I, I get the premise, but I'm... I'm having a hard time imagining the specific issue, but that, that's all good. Don't worry about trying to explain that whole thing. What's up, Mel? Which map is better, Emerald or Quattro? You know what sucks? I think it's Quattro. I don't even like... Okay, here's the thing. Let me, let me rephrase that. I do like Quattro. I didn't like Quattro when it came out. I didn't care for the Ibex. I still am meh on Ibex. But Quattro, all the other species. Red Deer, Roe Deer... Mouflon, I think... Actually, Mouflon, I forgot. That's another sheep species in Call of the Wild. I was talking about Bighorn earlier. Mouflon are fantastic. The wolves there are a lot of fun. I actually... As much as their opportunity kills, I quite like the European hares. Models could do with a little uh, TLC, but they're not too bad. There's a lot of good stuff to hunt on that map. I don't know what it is about Emerald Coast. It's just... There's something missing. I can't explain it, it's kind of got that same factor as Tauroa. When Emerald Coast came out, I mean, we were all over it, we hunted it really hard, there's some amazing rares. The animals all look good. That's just something about it. Like, it, it doesn't quite have that, yeah, I want to go back and hunt it factor. That, you know, Yukon and Leighton and these maps that are three, four, five, six years old do, and I can't explain it. But sadly, I don't have a lot of interest to go back to Emerald Coast, and it, it bums me out because there's some amazing rares that we haven't gotten. Doll sheep now? Hey, I want doll sheep on this map right here. I would hunt this map 12 times more if there were doll sheep. Why don't you like the Ibex? You know what I think it is? I think the classic Alpine Ibex are just cooler than all of the Ibex in Call of the Wild, and I had that expectation when Ibex were announced. I, I mean, I think they're cool. I think they're kind of bug-eyed, and I wish that they were maybe a little bit more unique from one to the next, though I understand, actually, in real life, they're body-wise very similar. It's just the horns. It's also the fact that the Grados really should be considerably bigger. The Batidis are probably too big. That stuff bugs me a little bit, but it's just... They're easy to hunt. They're easy to get diamonds of. I don't know. Sounds stupid, but I want to kill big animals that are taller than me. At first, I wasn't sure what the heck he meant by that. You're talking about, like, in games, right? Emerald is missing dingoes, wallabies, and much more? I'm not sure if... I mean, if maybe on the much more side of things, maybe that's where it lies for me. I'm not sure if those particular species would make the difference, like, in my personal perception of it. I think for everybody, it's going to be a little bit different. The Ibex are kind of sad. I just think they're... Maybe if the models were updated, they'd be better. I don't love the body models themselves. Uh, bait casters are made for artificial. Spin reels can use those too, but mostly live bait on spinners. I mean, I... I use plenty of non-live bait on spinners, but I, I the bait casting thing, I do get what you're saying. Go fishing. We are going to go fishing, I promise. Is that a 49ers logo you got there? Boy, oh boy, did they kill my Steelers yesterday. How do you see, like, even the even though the Crocs are huge, they also aren't... Oh, I get what you're saying. I got you. Yeah, you know what sucks, too, about the Crocs? There's It's such an improvement over the Gators. Because with with Gator hunting, you could never spot the things. You never knew you were looking at half the times. So they ran into the water. You never even got to see them. The Crocs are too easy to hunt. Like, there's a balance in there somewhere. Uh, is... Dark Grey Wolf Rare, yes. That's a weird rare for them, but it is. Can you fly me out to PA so I can hunt Whitetail? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Let me just pay for that real quick. Bait casters can also use bait, but generally heavier stuff. Cut bait for catfish, big suckers for musky. I see. Yeah, because that, that's what somebody had said earlier, is like the weight of the tackle. I'm getting it. They should add feral cats. Yeah, I was wondering if they would, actually. That was something that was in the back of my mind. I don't know if I could shoot, like, a house cat, even though it is a feral cat. It's, like, the same breed and, and uh, species or whatever as house cats. That'd be weird for me. That, that would be a tough one to get my mind around. So I'm going to go to Super Rare, Pipel Diamond, Whitetail. I know it's probably common, but it's my first. I wouldn't say it's common by any stretch. That's awesome, man. Unrelated, but since Texas beat Alabama, they were chanting after the game, We want Georgia. I don't think they want the smoke, to be honest. Who's Georgia's... Oh, it's, um... 
what is that kid's name? They have a new quarterback now, obviously Stetson Bennett got drafted. They still have that insane tight end. I imagine they have a bunch of talent at all the other positions. I'll be I'll be interested to watch Georgia towards the end of the year. Is there a classic stream on Wednesday? This Wednesday there's not. I'm actually going to be in Kentucky by then. Actually, why don't we uh why don't we do that? I was gonna run through basically the lineup of all the videos that I've got for the coming week. But basically Wednesday I'm heading to Kentucky. Be back next week. So no Wednesday or Friday stream. Next Monday there still will be a stream unless I have some kind of issue and get stuck down there. But the uh, the lineup in terms of videos, we have tomorrow a video very much like this stream right here, Call the Wild and the Angler combined, is Silver Ridge Peaks and Golden Ridge Reserve. Really cool, amazing kill from Silver Ridge Peaks. Pretty nice uh, catch over on Golden Ridge too. Then we have a real life hunting video that's going to be on Wednesday, so I'm going to basically start my hunting season for 2023 on that day. Figured we'd release some of the last footage from 2022. Then we've got what might be my best classic Let's Go Trophy Hunt video ever. I just recorded it this morning. Some of the most amazing kills. One specifically that I've wanted for like five years plus. Um, got a trophy cabin. Latent trophy cabin hunt back here in Call of the Wild. Another Call of the Wild in the Anger uh, combination video is going to be Revan the Coast and the Norway map. And then finally, a Way the Hunter video, plus next Thursday, or this Thursday, picks for the Week 2 games in the NFL over on the NFL channel. I, I watched a decent bit of that first show, Bottom Boy. That was, that was pretty cool to see it like in that live setting. Shadow and I are staying home, indeed. It's, uh, you know, like West Virginia where we get to hunt with Bottom Boy. Because that's private land and we can set up stands and we can, you know, we can have everything set up for the ideal scenario, essentially. It's a little easier to bring Kyle along for those kinds of hunts because obviously being new to archery hunting and stuff, it, you want to be set up as best as possible. This Kentucky trip's gonna be public land, we're gonna be hunting out of saddles. It's just, it's maybe not the best place for someone who's fairly new to archery hunting. So, for the sake of not complicating things, instead of Kyla staying at the Airbnb and watching Shadow, she can stay in the comforts of home and watch Shadow, so. Yeah, and she gets to protect her pumpkins, obviously. Hey, my hunting license at 17, only problem is a rifle or a bow. Uh, if I understand that correctly, you're saying you got the license but not a weapon yet? I think I'm, I think I'm getting that. Who the Steelers play week two? It's going to be Monday night to play the Browns. So actually, even though I'll be driving home most of Sunday, I won't miss the game. The Browns just lit up the Bengals, but they tend to play the Bengals really well. So it's hard to say, like, now how good are the Browns right now? I want to go through and watch the highlights. I know Deshaun Watson had some pretty meh plays. He had a terrible interception and stuff, but the Bengals just had no answers. Got a super rare leucistic diamond cape. That's like my dream super rare. That's awesome, man. Going bass fishing in the rain after work, what should I throw? Ooh. I would... Well, if it's in the rain, that might change it. If it's not raining, I would mess with some topwater stuff. If it's gonna rain... Honestly, are you... Do you do live bait ever? Because that probably would do pretty well. At least you're not a Giants fan? Oh my god, I watched that game. So I was recording... What did I record last night? Oh, that was the second video iteration of this kind of serious thing we got going on where we're hunting and fishing in the same video. So I had the game going specifically during the hunting part because it's a little easier to like, you know, coming up on a lake, all right, let's pause the game so I can be ready to react to anything, then while fishing it's like, oh, something bit, I can't have the, ga the game on, right? So fortunately it was pretty much over, <laughs> you know, 10 minutes in, but... I was watching the entire thing. I, that was just... It's one of those games where it just kind of got away from them. I don't think the Giants are nearly as bad as that made them look, but... Cowboys might be pretty good. Gonna try to get my longbow tuned since it's... Uh, since it's an early day at work. Might as well, man. Might as well give it a shot. Or multiple shots. Felt good about that. No hard shot there. Maybe no long shot. He's gonna come say hi. Uh, thoughts on the Lions? I was pretty impressed 
by that the uh issue. by that opener. Uh, Canarius Tony as a special secret agent for the Lions definitely helped that situation out. But I don't think that should take anything away from what the Lions actually did in beating the Chiefs because I I've seen it mentioned many times. This is not new information, but for the I mean for the last 50 years really, but especially the last like 20 years. What happens in that game is that the Lions, you know, maybe they get that one point lead and then they find a way to blow it. These Lions, the end of 2022, now into 2023 Lions, are winning those games. That's a big deal. How about them pack? Dude, I picked the Packers to win, so I just want to say I seen it coming. I don't think the Bears are very good, to be fair. But Jordan Love played good. Like, yeah. <laughs> Look good. We'll see. A lot of people expected nothing. A lot of people thought, well, I don't know why, but I get it. You know what I think it is? I think I see one post saying Justin Fields is a top three quarterback in the NFL. And then I click the comments. And then I see everybody being like, what are you talking about? And then I read them all. And then I'm engaging with that post. And then Facebook's like, you like Bears stuff? Here you go. So I get a million of those things now. But there's so many memes like Jordan Love's the fourth worst quarterback in the NFC North. Like, eh, well, <laughs> after after last week, he might be the uh, second best. Vikings didn't look too good either. Eight and ten finished and beating Chiefs week one's no joke. Wait, eight of ten maybe you're saying? Might be something like that. Not that about Denver losing because the Chiefs also are 0-1. I'm not sure if it matters for the division or anything anyway. I think the Chiefs are still going to run away with the division. However, losing to the Raiders gives me concern. I, I gotta watch the highlights of that game, which this is the one thing that annoys me. I, I gotta make my week two picks tomorrow because I'm leaving Wednesday. So I gotta have that video out and done before I leave like first thing Wednesday morning. So I gotta get through as many of the highlights as I can to try to gauge how good teams were. Cause you know, you can, can win a game and be the the lesser of the teams but anyway I was I was just surprised the Broncos didn't manage more offense with Sean Payton there I was also surprised the Raiders didn't blow the game with Josh McDaniels there because that's all they did last year you the last one Looks like it. What's up, winners? 8 of 10? Okay, I, I was thinking that must have been the case. I couldn't remember what they, like, record-wise finished as, but I think 9 and 8? Smoked with the hip shot. I thought we got that brain shot in there. We must have just whiffed it. Did I miss talking about the Browns beating the Bengals? Uh, I talked about it a little bit. Essentially, it's tough to make any... So here's the thing, the Bengals have looked pretty bad week one. Like the last couple years? Joe, B Joe Burrow always ends up hurt somehow in the preseason or getting appendectomies or whatever's going on. And the Browns tend to play the Bengals tough. So I don't know if there's much to be gleaned from that, other than that the Browns look like they're going to be pretty good this year. I'm curious about week two already. Uh, so it's Steelers-Browns Monday night. I think... As bad as the Steelers lost to the 49ers, Mike Tomlin's going to kill them in practice this week, not literally, figuratively. Uh, so I think they're going to be really motivated, but at the same time, the Browns got to be riding a really insane high right now to beat the Bengals 24-3 in Cincy, right? Nick Carlin, the Saints just barely squeezed out a win. So here's what, if you guys, anybody that's interested in NFL, NFL stuff and has any care in the world at all as to what I think, um, I do have a football channel that I'm starting up this year. Made predictions for week one. So many of the games played out like I thought. Right now I'm 7-8 and eight in my predictions. If the Jets win tonight, I'll be right down the middle, 500. Um, which for week one I'll take, because week one's such an unknown. But so many of the games played out like I thought. I said the Titans were going to win an ugly game. It was an ugly game, they lost an ugly game. I said the Lions might get a lead and the Chiefs are going to go win late. Well, Kadarius Tony dropped the pass, and that's exactly what would have happened, but instead the Lions won. Like, a bunch of these things played out like I expected, but the other team won. <laughs> It's just a little annoying because I feel like I had I had my finger on the pulse of the NFL and they just their heart stopped. I don't know. That didn't make sense. 
Uh, it was in Cleveland, okay. What do you play Madden on? PC. Fortunately, it's cross-platform this year, so I actually get to play against other people. It was so bad. Um, Madden 19 was the first time that Madden was available on PC since, like, I don't even know, 2005 or something? It was a long time. So I got Madden 19, Antonio Brown was on the cover, he was still, he wasn't crazy at the time, he was still a Steeler. I think the first Steeler to be on the cover of Madden, so I was big excited. And there were like three other PC players, so I was never getting any matchups. Same went for, what did we play, 21 and 22? During the free weekend I would jump on and play, couldn't get any matchups on PC. 23 I didn't play, 24, now that it's cross-platform, it's actually enjoyable, I actually get to find other players. I had Madden 08 on PC? Even still, that was a long time ago. I was gonna say it might have been Madden 07. Madden 07, Madden 08. Somewhere in there. The last one I had was 05? The one McNabb was on the cover of. Thanks for the link. Yeah, by the way, that link that Kyla has in the chat there is the link to said football channel. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Hey, right, come back here. Just tuned in, what game is this? This is the Hunter Call of the Wild. We shall be playing said game for about 25 more minutes, then we're going to jump into Call of the Wild the Angler. Did you really just call me a really long time ago, old? Yes. Have you been to England? I have not. I have not been outside the US. Oh, I saw a fox. Big meal. Where are you going? I'm just I'm just running away from dead bison. It's fine. Don't come here. <laughs> well, fine. Keep my beans to myself. You'll get stabbed by you. Gonna shank me with a rolled up bean can. I gotta come up with other <laughs> stereotypes. Uh, where was that fox at? There it is. Which reserve are you in? This is Yukon Valley, and this is bad shooting clinic. That was way back. Big mile. We gotta get back on uh, Ticket Moon Plains. I'm trying to. So, Way the Hunter is the only video I haven't recorded yet, and the week two picks. I just don't know where I wanna hunt. I wanna go to Ticket Moon, but at the same time, I just. I don't even remember what we have going on on that map. It died right before we shot. Um. We could go to Roar Shores, we could go back to Transylvania, I just don't know. Maybe I'll go to this purse. That's actually a good idea. What gun are you using on Fox? This is the 2250. 22250, I do this all the time. Too many twos. Came with the Emerald Coast DLC map. This guy right here, the Varminter. That's what I should call it, because I can say that. The, w the one reason that it's like preferable over the 243 is the fact that at 300 meters it's dead on so when you zero for 300 meters with the 243 it says that you're zero for 300 however it actually hits dead on more like 250 which is you know not desirable so you have that little advantage of some extended range on the the varminter all females up there got a male right there Perfect shot. Look pretty good to me. Some demonic stuff. <laughs> Just gonna screenshot that. It's not a bad one. Maybe it's because I haven't played it, but Way the Hunter doesn't have the same feel with the names. Nah, I mean... I think they go off of, like, real places. Which... It takes away a little bit of the... I guess Creative Liberty, maybe? Ticket Moon Plains isn't bad. Aurora Shores is kind of lacking. Uh, Nest Purse is okay, and then Transylvania is just... Yeah, that's Transylvania over there. Go there. <laughs> it just doesn't... It doesn't really have a name. Kind of. Oh, I forgot there's bears up here. I still want a big albino grizzly. Beautiful. Right between the trees, right in the heart. Flute, what's going on, man? 
You get to go hunting for the first time this year. That's always good. What you going after? There are creeps everywhere online, and that is true. Like who? I thought you said, like, me, meaning like you. Which would be a weird thing to say. I don't get paid this month. Made $46 out of the 50. Oof. Twitch said no you. Nice little gold. You find them with these, it takes me years to find one animal. I'll never forget when I got started in Call of the Wild. I came from the Hunter Classic. I had played the Hunter Classic for... Uh, at the time the Call of the Wild came out, about six years? Six and a half years? And I, I just didn't understand Call of the Wild at all. I, I didn't even like it that much. I didn't understand how anything was working, like I couldn't find animals like you're talking about. I just kept on going back to this one place over and over, and luckily there would typically be a black tail there, so I could like shoot that a hundred times as it's respawned. That was pretty much the extent of my first like 10, 15 Call of the Wild videos. And then eventually, kind of came to find out that things tend to spend a lot of time around water. So you'll notice we are fairly close to a couple of lakes here, and even though what we're looking at are rest zones, these guys are still, you know, in the vicinity of a couple of these lakes. So what we'll do is just pass between lakes, like we'll probably go claim our stuff here, go up to this lake. There will be animals in drink zones, that's one side of it, and then often things that are feeding or resting are close by too. Favorite thing to hunt in this game, it actually is Grey Wolves. We've had, I think, two encounters with aggressive Grey Wolves so far today. I just enjoy it, I think it's fun. When you've got like, six, eight, ten of them coming at you all at the same time, like trying to weave between them, make the shots, pick out the right one to shoot, maybe pick the right time to heal as well. I just, I enjoy that. When's your next collab with Rooster? I have not collabed with Rooster yet. However, it could happen. Nez Perce Reservation is in Idaho. Yeah, th that's what I was saying about them using like real names of places. Is there an insta-kill gun for wolves? That's ethical? Um, I mean, the 7 mil typically does. If you get them like double lung or, or heart. So what I wanted to happen was shoot right through the spine, into the spinal cord and drop them. That's not what happened. You enjoy getting eaten by wolves and I hate it. <laughs> I just, I'll never forget like when this map first came out, one of the things, so we got early access, I, I want to say there were like, at this time, maybe three or four creators that got early access to, to Yukon. It was, it was in the very early days of Call of the Wild's like partnership program and early access and all that. So we were streaming to, I don't even know, like 1200 people and we got attacked by a legendary wolf and just the freak out was real. And I actually shot it in the, in the intestines, whiffed on that and didn't get the diamond. I think we killed three, no. Three level nines, two diamonds by the end of early access. But I just, I think back on that every time we get aggressive wolves. Just that cool feeling of seeing a legendary there. If you've never felt teeth sinking into your flesh, you're missing out. <laughs> That's right. Is this, uh, is this that mission spot? It might be, because that's a very specific tree. Been playing the hunter for four years, starting to get old. Uh, the angler came out, now I'm addicted. Which one do you like better, and is the hunter getting old? I don't know if the hunter is getting old, per se. Um, I would say the last couple of maps have... I mean, Revan 2 was good, actually. Uh, what would that be? Two of the last three? Now, eh, three of the last four, kind of. So, here's what I'll say. Emerald Coast is missing something. I like it, generally, but it, it just needs something a little bit more. Mississippi and New England just don't have much to offer. It's just it's just the way it is. So I think we just haven't had enough, you know, dynamic 
big deal new content to keep it fresh over a long period of time. Like, you know, a new map every six months works when it's a good new map, but like I said, New England, Mississippi, they were kind of flops. Emerald Coast was good at first, everybody loved it, but I mean, heck, we can do it in two seconds here. Let's look at multiplayer. See what people are hunting. Do you need a DLC for Wolves? Uh, I mean, I guess you need the map DLC to hunt it, but you can go there in multiplayer. Sarge Felden, lots of servers. Layton, good few servers. Medved's got a good few. Verhunga's got a whole bunch. I think that's the most out of anything. Parquet's got two. Yukon's got a bunch. And this is where it starts to, to go downhill. Quattro's got four. Silver Ridge has, what's that, seven, eight. Tay's got two. Rancho's got none. Mississippi has three. Reventuli has six. New England has one. Emerald Coast has eh, actually a good number of them. But for the most part, you know, a lot of these newer maps just haven't kept the interest there. So I, I think that makes it tough to, you know, want to jump back in long term. It's one thing to be like, hey, I'm going to go play today. But putting in, you know, four or six hours a day, whatever some people want to do, it's tough when some of the new content hasn't hit. Thoughts about the Steelers game? Um, one thing, I think the Steelers aren't as good as they thought they were. I'm not sure that that means they aren't good. I think they are going to be good. But I think the Niners had a couple of things go their way early, and the Steelers were just like dumbfounded. They, they had no answer to anything they were doing. So they they did the Niners did not let 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 their foot off the gas. Embarrassing, frankly. <laughs> it, it was hard to watch. Is there a tutorial for starting the game over and not lose all the things I've bought? Add-ons, weapon packs, I just don't want to screw this up. I've done it before, but too long ago. Um, I mean, essentially all you do is in the main menu, you click new game. You should even keep your trophy lodge. I would say, ideally, if you can, like if you're on PC, maybe back up your save file before you do that. But yeah, you click new game, uh, it starts everything over, you have your DLCs, but you're a level 1 account. What kind of map do you want in this game? I think Greenland would have a real chance of success. Something like White Rhyme Ridge in the Hunter Classic, but you'd be looking at, you know, muskox. That would be the feature animal. I think they could do Arctic Wolves. Arctic Fox, that's one of the things there in Classic. Snowshoe Hare could be there. You could have a Ptarmigan species. Redo Caribou, Caribou, make them good. The Caribou here on Yukon are pretty meh. Uh, and there's one other one that I typically say... Missing one other species that could go there. Wolverine, maybe? I think that's the one that we talked about. I think that's a map with a feature species people would be interested in. It would be a snow map, which would be relatively unique. We've only got a little bit here on Yukon and then Medved. I'd be all over it. Uh, I watch your videos at school half the time, and I only watch yours. Well, I appreciate it. Just, uh, just don't get in trouble watching videos at school. Arctic Fox and Snow I think I said both of those. I might I might have missed them. What's the best division? Thought it was the AFC North, but holy man. The uh, Bengals didn't look good. The Steelers didn't look good. NFC West is interesting because the Rams killed the Seahawks. Maybe it is the West, but the Cardinals are expected to be so bad. I'd like to say the NFC East, but the Commanders are pretty, pretty rough. I have no idea. The Giants got smoked last night too, but that's another one of those games. A couple things went bad early and they just had no answers. It might still be the AFC North, but I don't know. I don't think any of the I don't think the fourth place team in that division is going to be bad by any stretch. So so I guess I'd go with that. May not hurt it's all good. I, I can't remember what I said. What's up Maximus? Anything good? Uh we killed an egg white wolf actually pretty early on. Got about 10 minutes left here on the Hunter Call of the Wild, and we're going to jump to the Angler. That is true, Bottom Boy. That didn't help a lot of teams, the, the weather situation. Been loving your Angler videos. I had to buy it after watching those. Glad to hear it. I, I've been really, really encouraged and pleased by, like, the reception to the Angler content. I didn't... Like, I, I felt like I didn't know how to make fishing game content. Especially when the game came out. So we did a little bit, and it was just kind of like, I, I don't know how to make this interesting but the more that i've played the game and the more that i've learned it i can kind of take the same approach that i do with the hunting games and 
try to be educational as we go along. Like, hey, I'm using this size spoon because that's going to give us a better chance of catching gold. Those, those sorts of things have helped a lot as they've made the game so it works that way. Um, and then too, just the, the quest to get diamonds and stuff. It's been a lot of fun. So I've got two videos this week that are going to be just like the stream, the Hunter Call of the Wild and Call of the Wild the Angler. Both ended up a ton of fun in, in both games. Good, good trophy things from all, all, all games. AFC East should be good. That's true. Didn't think of the East. They, yeah, they might take the cake there. I, I didn't think of that. They were so bad for so many years that doesn't even pop up into my mind. What's going on with the Steelers? I'm not sure too much. I'm assuming by that you mean like what the heck was wrong with them yesterday. I, I mean, I think the 49ers are simply a better team. Not not many teams can go play against the 49ers and not have that um, assessment that the 49ers are simply better. They shouldn't have been out physical and stuff like that, though. That was not a good display. I don't know if they weren't ready. I don't know if they were listening to some of the outside noise. You know, that they, they were better than thinking they were better than they really were, that kind of deal. I think they're going to be fine, though. I really do. I know, NFCs could be the best. I just think the commanders are going to be low enough on the totem pole that it drags the overall division down. Are you ever going to do a face reveal? Watch any of my real-life hunting content. I've got face reveals in pretty much all those videos. Um, there is a new one coming out on Wednesday. There, that video is already on the Meat Hunter channel if you guys want to see it. That's always a thing you guys can do, but it will drop on this channel too. At least the Steelers don't have Ryan throws picks a lot to Tannehill. Well, <laughs> Kenny did throw two picks yesterday. One was not at all his fault. Well, one was kind of not at all his fault. It wasn't a great read, but I think if Deontay Johnson doesn't fall down, he might catch it. Worst case, it's a contested catch and goes incomplete. But yeah, he just lost his footing and that was a, a big old oof. Could be the same old Cowboys falling apart at the end of the year as well. Maybe in the playoffs? But I'm not going to lie. The way they looked last night, they, they looked mid-season form ready to go. And the Giants aren't a bad team. They really are bottom boy. Purdy is... I think in like, I would say maybe 20 of 32 teams, Purdy probably doesn't have a, a great time as starting quarterback. In Kyle Shanahan's system, which, you know, it's very quarterback friendly, but it takes a certain type of quarterback to run that. It's very much run the play that's called. Not a lot of audibles, not a, not a lot of stuff like that. Understanding the concepts and all the, you know, crazy play names and being able to memorize all that stuff and just run it. Purdy's perfect for that. He has that experience from college being the starter for four years. It It's a perfect marriage down there. Their defense is nuts. Like, it is legit. Fred Warner is so good. Uh, Barry, thanks for becoming a shoosty, by the way. Good to have you here. Welcome, welcome. If you're not in the Discord, be sure to join that as well. Link up your YouTube. Get the member role. Take advantage of that good stuff and enjoy the emojis and green name in chat. You should do a Norway guide for the angler. Yeah, what I think I'd like to do, and I'm not, not exactly sure when I'll get to it because stuff's going to get pretty wild here uh, the next two weeks. Basically, heading to Kentucky all Wednesday, hunting there for almost a week, coming home. Going to be really chopping at the bit to, to help get Kyla all set up for archery season this year. Make sure her arrows are tuned and all that good stuff. Practice as much as possible. I got to make the last of the 2022 real life hunting videos that's gonna so there's one coming out on wednesday there's one after that and then we get right into 2023 so we'll see if i get to play the game enough that i feel comfortable making a guide i do want to do that but i can't promise it'll be soon good to be here hope you're doing okay we're doing good having a, honestly i had a, a classic hunt i don't know you may or may not watch the classic content but maybe my best classic hunt ever just some really cool stuff for that brand new amazing lives they added Really excited about that. So that was what I spent my morning doing, recording that. Super stoked. And uh, now we're five minutes away from going and playing the Angler, which I'm also pretty excited about. When does archery season start in PA? So 
the statewide archery season is September 30th. It's going to be two weeks from Saturday. The... It's basically like the areas around Pittsburgh and around Philadelphia where there's like a ton of deer and lower hunter density because it's, you know, near the cities and all that. I think that starts on Saturday. I believe they get a two-week basically head start. Which that's something I need to look into as well. Like, we're going out of Kentucky to kind of extend our season this year, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. I'm just super excited for it. But I should also look into, you know, maybe some public land. I mean, Pittsburgh's two hours away compared to my six-hour drive to Kentucky. I think that's something I should should look at. What else would you like to see come to the angler? Fly fishing is my number one want. That and more fish species on the maps. I don't think eight's enough. Um, so Golden Ridge Reserve now has like 17, which is awesome. Like, that makes the difference on that map for me. I think Norway needs at least 10, 12 species. I feel like it's lacking a tiny bit. So I think that's what they should do. I think they should strive to have a few more fish species per reserve. And then, yeah, like fly fishing, proper surface strike animations, just some cleanup stuff. Like, when you're reeling in a fish, you'll get it like flipping all around as my, like kind of how my cursor is going here. It looks a little goofy. Clean up some of that stuff and it, it's in a good spot. I've been pleasantly surprised the more I play it. Like, you know what? This game's, this game's doing some stuff. I like it. All right, 356. Let's see if we can kill one more bison then we'll jump to the angler. Do you fish in real life? I do. I didn't get out as much this year as I wanted to. I mean, how many times did I go with Psycho Beagle? Probably three times. Kind of fair few on the fly rod. Caught my first uh, trout on a dry fly this year. Caught some trout on Nymph last year, but first time catching one on a dry fly, so that was pretty cool. But then our little creek here, there's a, a creek that runs through our front yard. We just miss this wolf a hundred times. Last year it had quite a few trout in it. This year it had none. So we, we just didn't didn't fish as much. Come back to Tennessee and I'll set you up on some private land? Hey. Something I'll definitely keep in mind. I know Tennessee's got some monsters. The cool thing about you guys too, your season also opens when deer is still in velvet, if I'm not mistaken. Next year we're gonna go camping and feast. We do. We gotta bring Shadow, she's not gonna be in her cone. That was one of the things that kept us from going camping this year. Should be all set. Hmm? Social weather. Oh yeah. As long as we find a place that's not going to have too many people around to just have her go nuts. A lot of big deer come out of West Tennessee. Indeed. Try fishing Saturday, but I'm pretty sure an otter cleaned out my creek honey hole. Oh, true. Have to ask again about starting the game over. I may have missed your reply because the tablet stuff... Oh, shut off. No worries. Um... If you just press new game from the menu, it starts you over at level one and you get to keep all your DLCs and you should keep your trophy lodge. Now, I say should because there have been some trophy lodge oddities before, but anytime I've ever started over, like, you know, you press new game in the menu, level one, but your trophy lodge remains. I think Kyle has done that a few times. What? Start over, new game, trophy lodge stays. Yeah, so you get to keep your lodge and, um, you know, if you want to get that experience of being level one and get an epic to grind up, you can do it. So here's my idea here. Oh, he's going aggressive. Never mind. I was going to go get a four-wheeler, but if he's going to run half the distance aggressive towards us, or he might not because he's already dying. Yeah, let's go around and get him. Started over a couple times and the trophies have stayed for me. Yeah, generally it's fine. I would say almost always it's fine. But they're just, just over the years. Lodges have done weird stuff. Like in my, I have a, a lodge kind of consisting of like, kind of our best stuff before the new scoring system. We had, you know, several Legacy Diamond Whitetail in there, Legacy Diamond Blacktail. Some cool stuff. I think our big Legacy Diamond Whitetail just disappeared. It's just no longer in that lodge. So what I was recommending earlier is if you're on PC or on some console or wherever we can back up your save files, I don't know how that stuff works on console, I would back up your save just in case. If you can't do it, you can't do it, but if it's an option. Is this me or is the water tripping? Uh, there were some changes to the water. Up close it looks okay. 
at a distance is kind of screwed up. Do you like Way of the Hunter more than Call of the Wild? I like Way of the Hunter more than Call of the Wild, like in the off season. So now we're getting to this point where, you know, real life hunting season started, starting. I'm going hunting on Wednesday down in Kentucky. Our season opens here in PA in about two weeks. The more that is the case, the more I'm into like Call of the Wild and stuff, because it's a little faster pace. You know, I'm going to go and sit in a tree stand for who, who knows how many hours a day, a bunch in the next couple of months. So I don't necessarily need that slower pace that Way the Hunter offers. Maybe I want that change of pace that, you know, the Hunter Call of the Wild offers. So I like them both. It just kind of depends on on the time of year, frankly. And we'll continue to play both throughout uh, throughout the fall. So we're going to go ahead and dive into the angler, pun absolutely intended. Are gray red deer rare? Uh, no, that's just like a female variant. Water cannot be easy at all. No, it's got to be really hard to simulate. Just got to swap this over right here. How the stream schedule will be affected by hunting season or do you not know yet? Um, it will stay the same minus like when we get to about November. I'll probably push some things around like, you know, maybe a cold front comes through. We might stream on a Thursday instead of a Friday or stuff like that. I always make announcements in the Discord and on the community tab. Um, the only other thing is around November, I do cut the Wednesday night classic streams. I hate to do it, but it's, it's kind of a necessity to be able to hunt as much as I want to. So, a bit of a trade-off. We lose the classic streams for a month or two. What's going on, Jaden? Doing good. How about you? Okay, so one of the things I said I was going to do was pull up the spreadsheets that are available in the official Call of the Anglo Discord. Somebody asked about Northern Pike spots, so why don't we maybe start with that? So one, actually there's two areas that are showing up as like potential diamond areas. Those are, if we look over here, looks like this lake, one just about at the bridge, and one a little further in. So let's go see if we can catch some pike here. The recommended size uh, hook for a diamond pike is a one up. So we'll probably use like a size one or two and try to target gold pike. Uh, can we get a boat? Should be able to. This lake's pretty big. Didn't mean to do that. Kind of want to play now? Do it. You should do it. What do you think they could do with lodges in the angler? Funny you should ask that, because in the upcoming videos in which I'll combine the Hunter Call of the Wild and Call of the Wild the Angler, I do a little bit of lodge stuff at the very end of those videos. Kind of photoshopping what I wish the lodges were. Um, so they're very big on catch and release in Call of the Wild the Angler. When the game was initially announced, they had like a, I think they did a couple of Q&A streams with the lead developer. And they were, you know, they were very big on catch and release. They really wanted that to be a main focus of the game. And I think that's fair enough, but a lot of fish taxidermy, taxidermy in air quotes, is actually um, replicas. So what I think they can do is, you know, give you like a shop that you go to or whatever. Make it very clear, like, name it uh, Rory's Replicas or Rushy's Replicas. That actually is the name of the lead developer. His name is on the rod. See this, uh, I don't know if you can see it very well. See that word rushy across there? That's like his uh, nickname. So, yeah. Call it Rushy's Replicas. Make it clear you're getting a replica of the fish you caught. Give it a little animation where you take measurements. Whatever whatever it's got to be, make it clear that that's what you're doing. And I think, I think you could do some really cool stuff. I mean, I would love to have that. I was... I'll, I'll give you a little spoiler of essentially what I was talking about in the combined videos. If somehow they combined the trophy lodges in the game, like, if you could go into the Hunter Call of the Wild and have your Call of the Wild the Angler fish in that lodge, it'd be amazing. The engines are different. I don't think there's any prayer of that ever happening, but I just think it would be awesome, so I had to Photoshop that into existence for my own <laughs> enjoyment. Flantro the Fisherman, that, that's me. So how about scars and bumps and missing eyes that generate randomly? So that's another thing I talked about. Not exactly that, but it falls into that category. 
um, like rare fish, unique patterns, like you're talking about scars, bumps, missing eyes. Especially if they go, you know, some kind of route with the trophy lodge. Worst case, like, give us um, some kind of record book or something where we can take a screenshot or the game takes a screenshot for you because let me uh, let me put a small lure on here because I can tell you why that actually could work as the way the game is right now we should be able to pull something out of here with this when are you going to play the hunter call the wild again uh, we just played it for an hour <laughs> you just missed the hunter part of the stream uh, remember an old game, I forget what it was called, and you could put your trophy fish in a tank? Yeah, that's something else that was, um, kind of suggested as, like, potentially a solution to the catch and release side of it, like, if you don't want to actually have to kill the fish. A lot of the pike hate us. Scars from past catches? Yeah, exactly. Or, or, you know, like, Missing Eyes was mentioned, that could be past catches, that could be fights with other fish, whatever it is. There's a lot of cool stuff they could do. I guess I get the idea of troll fishing being catch and release, but like, do they know how many cultures survive and thrive on fishing? They act like killing a fish is horrendous? Yeah, um... I don't know, like, I guess I, I kind of get where they're going with that. I don't know, that, that one's hard for, for me to fully wrap my head around. It, it is hard for me to like put myself in their position to be like, this is why they're so big on catch and release. There are, like, there's overfishing issues. Maybe that's primarily it. Like, they see that kind of stuff and they, you know, want to... They, they want their game to help bring awareness to that. I don't know exactly how to phrase that, but regardless. I still think... You know, whether it's the tank idea, or just replicas, or whatever, there's there's ways around it. Or, or yeah, like, like she was saying, at least pictures of the fish. I wish I could catch a fish so I could show you what I'm talking about. I have one other way that- oh, nice. I have one other way that we're likely to catch one, even if these guys are just not cooperating. I did forget about the dynamite thing. That did, in fact, happen. Meanwhile, on Call the Wild, you can kill everything. I mean, true, true. There's a little of a juxtaposition there. Okay, listen here, fishies. I don't know why you hate me. But I have a solution to your hatred. Something's got to be over there by that dock. When does bow season start up in PA? I live in Maryland. Maryland's a state that I'm looking into hunting sometime in the next couple of years. Um, so our statewide archer season opens on September 30th. Basically, it's the last Saturday in September or the first Saturday in October. It's either going to be, it'll be like, say, between September 29th and October 5th. If the first Saturday in October falls on, like, the 7th or the 6th, like it does this year, it'll open September 30th. Otherwise, it'll open somewhere between October 1st and 5th. Uh... There are parts of PA, the east and west side. Oh, there we go. Oh, a little something just nailed that. There's parts of PA that open this Saturday. Seek out Maryland seems like a cool hunt. It really does. A couple gold musky and pike at the dam. Nice. What is that? A bass. We'll take that. Okay. So I was talking about the game taking the screenshot for you. In this screen, you can't move the camera anyway. So the game should be fully capable of just, like, grabbing the screenshot for you anytime you catch a personal best. There's there's nothing to change, so it just, it should go into the regular toggle UI screen, screenshot it, and it could just put it in your record book. I think that'd be awesome. Uh, is a 170 Whitetail Gun Hunter Classic? Absolutely. It's a very nice one. I'm in your server? Oh, nice. Was that you over there? I saw somebody. I'm gonna go under the bridge. A uh, good pike spot on Norway. Norway I'm not as familiar with, and the pike get way bigger on Norway. It's pretty cool. Um, but I don't know any good spots, per se. I would also agree with that white nitro. Limited camera movement would, in fact, be nice. Let's see if we can just try right up under the bridge here. For the sake of it, too, let's go with a size 3 spoon. Chance we pull some silvers out of here, but 
could definitely get golds on this too. We could get a diamond on this, frankly. We can get a diamond on any small one. Cut a 30 pound pike and it was a gold? Yeah, they're massive on Norway. Diamond on Golden Ridge is like 17 or 18 pounds. A photo mode is needed where you can hide the fishing line so you can take pics under the water of the fish? That could be a thing. Never thought of that. Now, could that be abused to potentially, like, locate big fish? That's a place that they'd need to be careful. Because I think one of the one of the reasons the game's so appealing to me is that catching big fish is actually difficult. Like, most of the species in the game, we don't have diamonds of. I think we got to the point that, you know, it was really easy to get diamond fish. That would diminish most of the point. Uh, if you're asking real fishing if I'm on Norway or Golden Ridge right now, we're on Golden Ridge. Is there a way to join friends only servers or is it random or single player only? Um, you can't do friends only, but you can join friends in another server. I think you gotta do it through Apex Connect if I'm not mistaken. Initially, when the game came out, that didn't work. I remember, like, I tried to join, I think Kyle and I tried to do a video and then Mel and I streamed together and we had a heck of a time getting into the same server. I believe that's been solved, though. We might start fishing for something other than Pike if they're just not going to cooperate. Cut my first only diamond, a smallmouth, and it was such a surprise. That I want a diamond smallmouth so bad. That's awesome, man. All right, Pike just saying no today. Let's pick other. What time is it? 1700? We might just, at the very end of the stream, catch some nighttime fishing. Maybe we can go for some walleye and stuff. Um, what about kokanee salmon? Apparently, down here is good for them. It's in that area of like the, um, what is known as a really good lake trout spot. So we may visit that too. Yeah, <laughs> that was a thing too, bottom boy. The, uh, the game did seem to have some strugs putting clothes on everybody. Heard that Larry and the Bourbon are next in the Discord? That should be correct, yeah. You know, I never thought of it. The way they have it lined up, like in rotation, you have the two kind of cat, so Bourbon are like a type of catfish, I just learned that recently. You have the two catfish, then you've got the two big ones, that would be Sidewinder and the Atlantic Salmon, the ones that are there right now. And then lastly, you get the bass on, um, on Golden Ridge and the pike on Norway. It's a nice little system. When did you begin on this game? Uh, I mean, the game came out last August, so I got to play then. When do the next Legendaries go in rotation? I think it's like late tomorrow, no, late Wednesday night. Pretty sure this is that spot for late trout, right? Yeah. Gonna give it a try again. We had no luck with this last time. Let's see if we can do a little better this time. So we have, I think the thing's already set up. We'll try a little jigging. Does real speed matter on constant because I always use speed one? I don't think it matters for like attraction. So like I'm, I'm pretty sure whether you're on real speed six or real speed one, the like if the fish is going to hit the lure, it's going to hit it. Where it matters is whether or not the fish can catch up to the lure. So what you could like, let's say you're on speed six and it's a slow fish. It may be attracted and then you might pull it so far away from the fish to, that it no longer is going after it. So. Typically, real speed three I find is pretty safe. Most fish can catch up to it. If I see a fish on the top going for my lure, I slow down to speed one. Got a 31 pounder that spot, not bad. I reverse T-Rex, I should do that. Surprised my dog didn't just start barking. Shadow aims to please. Has anyone tried the Angler on console? I'm seeing a lot of people playing on console. So far, I really haven't seen many complaints about the game there. I'm trying to remember what I used to use. I think it was the spinners. Let's try maybe out this way. About 70 feet deep there. Just letting us know she's there. Oh yeah, reminding us. 
those gloves say Hunter Call of the Wild? They do. Um, I don't know exactly, like, how I got them. They kind of just showed up in my inventory one day. I, I think it was for, like, maybe people that owned the Angler and the Hunter Call of the Wild within the first couple months release. Something to that effect. But, yeah, you don't earn them or anything. They just kind of show up. But the jacket matches, um, the hat matches, the pants I don't think do, but they're close. Faster real speed has a bigger attraction circle, and slower is easier to catch. So the meta I learned from Crow is to go real speed 6 till you're 70 to 80 feet out, and then go to speed 1. How oh, interesting. Bigger attraction radius. That kind of makes sense to me. I wonder why they would do it that way, though. I can see both sides of it. Like, I'm thinking of if I were fishing, like, let's say, for instance, I was fishing a creek and I was using, like, a rooster tail uh, spinner lure. If I'm going too fast, it's just not going to look realistic. And if I'm going too slow, I'm not going to get the action of the lure. I kind of wanted to go more realistic with that. I had no idea it was a bigger attraction like that. I caught a diamond bass, but the fish in my hands was a huge pike. What? That's weird. I don't think we're really down deep enough to catch a lake trout here. Alright, we're going to try one other thing with this. I'm not going to do this too long because it's a little boring to watch. Uh, I don't reel when the rod tip is down when jigging. I found that works well. To let it drop down more, you're saying, right? If I understand that correctly. What are you fishing for? We're looking for lake trout right now. Only going to do so briefly because we actually came over here for kokanee salmon, but just so happens that we spawned in an area that's known for lake trout. Stupid complaint, but I don't like the noise the clicks make in the inventory. They added a bunch, like, there's... I, I've noticed that. They did a lot of, like, audio stuff in this game. There's a lot of little noises that kind of add up that maybe aren't so necessary. I know what you mean. Will you be watching the game tonight? That is the plan. I gotta edit a video for Kyla here after the stream. I got a little bit of work to do with my saddle setup. Hopefully I'm gonna shoot my bow. And then... It's uh, Aaron, bottom point, either are hunting in Kentucky, so we're going to have a little Discord call and iron out all the necessary details. When does the new Legendary reset? Basically, like, late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning, depending on time zones. Lake, try to drop a spoon at the bottom and just constant reel it in. Y yeah, that's that's what I'm uh, going to try here. That's how I've caught some of my best... This isn't even the right rod, so... um. Pfft. Oh, my me. I'm paying attention. <laughs> anyway, um, that's how I've caught some of my best ones, but as of late, I just can't get any hits on this. COVID surveys? I'm not getting those. Can you explain all the numbers in the bottom right mean? I just started playing, but I haven't figured them all out yet. Okay, so the white number in the bottom right is the depth of the water at the particular point that your lore is at. The yellow number in the bottom right is the depth that your lore is at. So, for instance, like, we're at 37 feet with the lore. The bottom here is 64 feet. And then the top number on the right is the length of line that's out. And you had a feature to the sunglasses to reduce the glare on the water. That could be cool. They did it in the Hunter Classic, kind of. Where are you on the map? Uh, let me reel this in. Just make sure we're not going to have something hit it right at the surface. That rarely happens for me with Lake Trout. Lately, catching them rarely happens. You know what we ought to do? Why don't we just catch a lake trout? That'd be fun, right? <laughs> just put on the smallest possible lure and give that a try. This little spot right here. It's like a little spot where the water juts out before it continues south. Uh, just out from the Blackfoot Basin uh, trailhead. All right, we're going to throw literally the smallest spoon down there. And if we can't get a hit on that, I'm going to take it as my sign that it's time to go for something else. What was your reaction to the Steelers' first game? Uh, by the time it was 17-0, I started laughing at the mistakes they were making. It was so, like, comical how unprepared they were. It wasn't, it wasn't good. Do you use mechanical broadheads or fixed? I'm using Magnus Stinger to blade fixed. 
I was literally, I don't know if Fro's still in here, I was talking to him earlier, I think he's using the exact same things. Um, so I, I use fixed as well. I think this is my third year shooting fixed blades. I use mechanicals from the time I was like 14 when I got started, all the way through to the last couple of years. And the reason I, like mainly the reason I switched to fixed blade is I have a tendency to kind of hug the shoulder when I shoot. I shoot pretty close to the shoulder blade and a fixed blade is just going to be a lot better if you do hit that shoulder blade. I love the accuracy of mechanical and the technology for mechanicals generally has gotten better. Like they are pretty darn reliable. But if you do what I do, that shot placement, you're just better off with a fixed blade. So I shoot VPAs. Um, last year I shot through two blade single bevels. I just didn't have as much time to tune. Tuning a two blade broadhead's a little tougher. So uh, I'm shooting a three blade vented this year because they're a little easier to tune. Even at that I had some tuning struggles, but I assume I was probably just not doing as well as I could have. Oh, nice, Reinhardt. Size 5 spoon works best for me for Lake Trout. That's what we have on right now. I mean, in theory, we can catch anything from like a 10 pounder to a 50 pounder. More likely to be a 10 pounder, though. What size hook for Diamond Lakers? If you specifically want a diamond and only a diamond, you want size 4 aught. What I would do is use like a 2 aught, though. So. You know, maybe even a one on. Every one you catch is probably going to be at least, or should be, at least be a gold, and you've got a chance a diamond's going to hit that too. How are you? How are you not just using size twelve? It doesn't exist. Tens as small as it goes. Tuning can be a pain. It really can. Like I got a paper tuned. I was really happy with that. Um, I didn't bear shaft tune. Another thing that, like, if I got my bow in March, I would have done all that. But I did get it in like mid July, and that's it's just the way it works. Like when you're when you have like a bow sponsor or whatever, like Darton has been great. Let me just say that first. I'm sure they have so many orders to fulfill. The bow actually isn't even out yet. I think it's coming out here hey, maybe this month, maybe next month. Their um their twenty twenty three bows are basically just releasing. So it's just typically the case. I end up getting my new bow sometime middle of summer. I think as late as... One time I got it August 10th or something like that. That was with Obsession. But anyway. I didn't get to do all the tuning stuff I would have liked to have done. But I'm pretty happy with it. Like, I have the... My main two arrows flying really good. My third one's a little iffy. If I get to my third, I'm, I'm going to have some confidence issues and that's never good. So hopefully we don't get to that point. Thumb release a wrist? Uh, wrist. I'm actually, this is the one thing. So I bought my, my first bow when I was 14 at a yard sale for 75 bucks. Came with a hard case, which by the way, that case itself is worth more than 75 bucks. It was a Hoyt uh, MT Sport. Probably now a 25 year old bow. Came with a bunch of aluminum arrows, a Cobra release, and some other stuff. I can't even remember what all was in it. I still use that Cobra release. I shouldn't. I've been wanting to get a new one for like I don't even know at least three years the main reason is frankly very little to do with the release itself and more to do with the fact that the strap is just coming apart but that kind of just is what it is and I'm still using it have you killed a bear with a bow? I've never actually hunted bears We need some key tips for this game, being able to catch bigger fish and finding the fish. I fish for hours and not catch a thing, all in different spots as well. So what you use, like the lure that you use and the size of the lure that you use is going to be the main thing. Was that? That looks like a cutthroat. If they're in here, that'd be pretty cool. Um, what I would start with is just really small hooks. Like, put a size 10 hook on that's the smallest size hook in the game. Go, go from there. Wherever you fish, you should be able to get stuff on a size 10 hook. Um, choosing the correct lore and stuff really just comes down to like reading the handbook. Let's uh, let's retrieve this all the way. If we're not gonna get anything to come after that, we'll just kind of speed this along real quick. Not seeing anything there. So you go to the handbook. Let's say you want to fish for orid trout. Their bait and lore preferences are eggs, red worms, and crankbait. Use one of those. For the most part, you should be able to get hits from them. 
My cousin told me how much his Hoyt bows that up cost, and I almost passed out his thumb release for like 300 bucks. Oh my goodness. $300 for a That's pretty wild. Good spots for salmon? Uh, evidently, we are in one. Right down in here is apparently quite good. I'm going to look at their preferences. Spinner, spoon, and crankbait. Do we have something smaller than a size 5? I put the size 6 spoon back. Because size 4 is the diamond one for them. Oh, we do have a size 6 crankbait. Nope, that's a size 1. That ain't what I want. This guy. Let's see if we can get one to hit that. It will be interesting, too, because it's going to dive down. See if we catch one up off the bottom. Oh, okay, right away. Got a little something there. It's an okay size fish based on the tension. Uh, what rod this is? The Daredevil? No, Devil's Advocate, I think it's called. We'll go into the inventory and take a look there in a moment. I think it's like the best or second best spinning rod you can get without spinning tokens. There's a coconut salmon. Good deal. Nice little silver fella. Okay. Just to make sure. Called the Devil's Advocate. It is the 77 pound strength spinning rod. I heard something. We'll try it again. You should try and catch a burbot. Um, so they're a nocturnal fish. They're nighttime active. Pretty soon, it's around 1800, maybe 1815 in game, where I start to see the nocturnal fish biting. We'll look for burbot, walleye, those sorts of things. We should have like the last maybe 20 minutes of the stream getting to do that. How do you buy more rod slots? Um, I don't know that you can. I think five is the max. Could be wrong about that. You can upgrade the size of your like storage your tackle box so maybe there is a way for the rod slots couldn't tell what that was but something jumped right where we just cast it where can i get a diamond or even gold pike i've been fishing for ages for them and biggest is silver are you talking about golden ridge reserve pike because there are uh pike over on norway as well uh, i'm not sure reinhardt maybe what was it what line? I've got 38 pound fluorocarbon on right now. Go figure. Salmon first cast, and then they're just like, nope, we're done. Let's get a little closer to the bridge. Let's see what time it is as well. It's about 1743. Best way to get golds. Uh, use the size of lore to catch golds, which I know it's going to sound stupid, but I'll give you better information on that. If you go to the official Call of the Wild the Angler Discord, they have spreadsheets in there, community made. It's like the most comprehensive information. It's everything you need. So for instance, um, right now, we're fishing for kokanee salmon, so I'm looking at the spreadsheet on my other monitor. The size of hook or hook size on a lure that you want to catch a gold is size five. What I do is I go one size below. So I'm using a hook size six crankbait Basically, that means, you know, if we get a, um, if we get a salmon to bite, decent chance it's a silver, but we can still catch gold. So we should be able to actually catch some fish. We should be able to see more, you know, fish actually hitting this and still have a chance of getting the, the good ones. Got a diamond bourbon on the southwest lake? Oh, nice. I feel like we're about due for a diamond. We haven't caught one in a while. So whale skull... Hellbender with brook trout and albino opossum and something else? I'm trying to remember. I don't think I have seen that. Do I get for playing at the same time tabbed out? Wait, what happened? Yes, about the oh, I gotcha. Do you prefer the hunter or the angler? I mean, I'm always going to prefer hunting games generally, but I've actually had a ton of fun with the angler. If I had more time for it, because that is one definite with the angler. Like, if you want to catch big fish, you got to put in the time. If I had more time, I would definitely be playing the angler more even than I am right now. 
But I've been putting in pretty considerable time as of late anyway. Let's go right off the bridge. If we can jump up on the side. I don't know if we can. Got any really good spots on Golden Ridge for Pike? Apparently, uh, this lake right here, where Stevie is, that's apparently a good Pike Lake. Uh, Jackson, thanks for the six months of being a Shusty, by the way. Welcome back. I certainly appreciate that. Good to see you once again. Ooh, I feel like we can jump up there. Maybe not. Can I jump up on the railing? Feels like we can, and then it just doesn't happen. Okay, jump just didn't happen at all. Okay. I don't think I can get around this. I mean... Can kind of just... Fish right off this edge. What happens if you fall in the water in the angler? Uh, I can show you. Not much, frankly, but... It's kind of entertaining. The ninja. <laughs> I'm really good at the parkours, that's what they tell me. These salmon aren't really being very kind to us today. We have done much better with them. Alright. I don't know if it... I'm gonna get deep enough water. Basically, you get an epic splash sound, and then it spawns you back on land. Alright. Let's try the northern kind of hot spot for the coconuts. That would be... Right up in here, so it's gonna take a little bit of a boating trip. That's some insane noises that just made. Last time I ate salmon, I got food poisoning. Well, that's not good. I think last time I ate salmon was like during COVID. Well, right when COVID kind of was starting, so nobody knew what it was yet. My brother and I were going to Texas to visit my cousin. And on the way home, we stopped at that Pyramid Bass Pro in Tennessee. And I'm pretty sure that's what I had for that Cabela's... Uh, well, Cabela's Bass Pro restaurant with salmon. In New Jersey, it's either Quick Check or Wawa Not Sheets. Sheets is the best. Just saying. I need to read what Soup said there. Uh, there's something missing so from this game for me to not buy it. Even if they had fly fishing, it's lacked pizzazz for me. Not entirely sure why. I think the fish could use a little more character. Meaning, like... Maybe some more animations when you land them. Maybe some less kind of weird floppiness as you're hauling them in. That kind of stuff could certainly help. Where did you, where did you say I find the sheet? If you're in the official Call of the Wild the Angler Discord... Um... There's a text channel called Resource Hub. That's where you're wanting to look. Well, they should, Ace Pilot. That's a very good point. They should do that. More activity while fighting them? Yeah, I think it needs to matter more. Like, if you lose tension on a really big fish, I think it should just shake the hook. I think if you lose tension on a small fish, you should get a, a window in which to get tension back before you lose it. There should be a, a small window where that's the case with the... Um, big fish too okay little kokanee salmon why are you not hitting my lure oh he might be I just saw him dive nothing nope alright I wish I had the small spoon on me have a small spinner per chance. I don't know what I've got. Got spinner baits, but I don't think that'll work. Try the spoon. I like fishing on top. Usually better. The fins flapping like wings is weird to me. Like when you're holding them, do you mean? 
I'm a Giants fan, can you please tell me everything's gonna be okay? So I legitimately do think that game is one of those ones where it just gets away from you early, and a couple of fluky things happen, and it's just like, not your day. I don't know that they would have beaten the Cowboys, like, let's say... Like, it wasn't either team, either team's best day, because you can make the argument that was... What is that coming out of there? It's a big fish. Excuse me, sir? Oh, it's a rainbow, okay. Not that big, then. Just decent. Anyway, you can make the argument it was like the Giants' worst possible day. Let's say it was a very average day for both teams. I think the Cowboys probably are better right now, but they're not 40 and nothing better. The Giants, like, on a on a good day for them, maybe they catch a couple breaks. I think they could have won the, that game. It does seem like if you have a fish on, as long as you don't snap the line, you'll land it. That is exactly the case right now, yeah. So the environment does kind of play a rule suit, but it is only like snapping the line. At the very end, no, the very beginning of, I think, the Twitch stream that we did on Friday, we did the angler, and that was one of the first things that happened. I set up, I had a couple of rocks out in front of me, I don't know what I hooked into, but I snapped the line off on a rock. Like, that kind of stuff is nice, but there, there are some... You know, for instance, it used to be the case that you could snap the line off on your boat. So if I cast it like this, and hooked a fish back here, as I'm reeling it, if I don't get it around the side, the line snaps when it hits the boat right there. I kind of thought that was cool. I wish that that was still the case. I get maybe why they removed it, because you can't entirely control the fish. Like, you can't spin 360 or anything like that. How'd you get that rod? I uh, just purchased it in the store. It may be one that's only available in the souvenir shop now. When I when I bought it, it wasn't, but they did move some stuff. I think so, Soup. I don't I don't know if this is just a me thing, but I tend to find some of my bigger fish, and just generally more fish, like near cover, stuff like that. I I don't know if it's just been luck. Maybe it's because typically you're fishing from the shore, right? Okay, something just surfaced and had no interest in that lure, but that guy's gonna hit it. But yeah, like, near rocks and stuff, I do seem to catch more. Schmoll. Time is at 18.02. Alright, I think we should start looking for walleye and stuff, so... You know what? What about, um... Sturgeon? Sturgeon might be a good one. Let's try, we'll go to the main lake because we should be able to get like pike and tiger musky. Let's see if we can pull some sturgeon out of there. The sturgeon might not quite be active yet, but in the next couple of minutes they will be. So we're gonna probably grab a boat, just because we can. Does it tell you if the fish is male or female? It does not. It's another little like detail thing that I wouldn't mind being a part of it. Sister-in-law's brother caught a 128-pound sturgeon last summer. Holy. These are, by the way, if you don't know, these are just shovel-nose sturgeon. They're like 10 pounds. Schmoll sturgeon. Caught a 48-pound diamond lake trout last night. Nice, man. I really want a diamond lake trout. I've been within a pound of the diamond requirement three different times. I have three 34-pound lake trout. Needs a deep sea map? Yeah, like saltwater fishing, deep sea fishing, all that stuff hopefully can come to the game. Alright, so the reason I went to this particular area is it's one of the areas listed on the map as a place that diamond sturgeon have been caught. It does seem like big fish spawns are relatively specific. So like, you know, if someone's catching a diamond sturgeon in an area, if you go to that spot, you should be finding big fish there too. Bow fishing? Well, if they want to stick with catch and release, then bow fishing is not something we're going to see. Ice fishing will be sick? I think that's something we could maybe have happen. I think of uh, Cabela's Alaskan Adventures. Ooh, there's a pike coming in to get that. Last second there. Or Tiger Musky? Tiger Musky. Not much of a bite when he's that close, but... Now 11 pounder. We take those. Got a 35.00 pound gold, haven't found the diamond. Dude, you must have been, like, within a half a pound. It's 35 and change for diamond. EW needs to get over the catch and release? I mean, I I would agree, but it's their game, so I'm just saying, like, their current 
model bow fishing is not going to happen. There is actually an ice fishing game. Really? I didn't know that. 700 plus pound groupers, sailfish, tuna, sharks. Yeah, I mean, they would definitely need to overhaul a lot of stuff just to make fish that big. I don't know how they deal with like the landing animation and all that stuff. Um, but once they have that figured out, you're right. I think it could be really cool. Some of the stuff you could catch, some of the like sizes of the fish. Like I think that might be something for a little further down the road. I think the next step is probably, you know, I, I don't know what's the regular, the regular sturgeon people go for, like the hundred pound, the one that your uh, relative costume. Like I don't know if that's just regular sturgeon or if there's a particular name for it, but that kind of stuff. I think they start there, you know, 120, 150 pound fish, maybe had some uh, Wells catfish, slowly move up to those absolute monsters, and I think it could be good. What are we hooking into here? Little baby pike. Got a 26 pound diamond Xander. Nice, man. Xander's actually the very last thing that I targeted in the end of a video coming up later this week. They're nice. I like them. The Angler 2? Hopefully this game has a long time till the Angler 2 has to come out. Cut a 17.8 pound gold pike. What's diamond? Did you... Uh, no, that's 17 pound gold. It's got to be Golden Ridge. I think Kyla has a 17 point something pound diamond. So unless they've changed it, maybe it's high 17s, low 18s. That does make some sense, Bottom Boy. Like if they want like the killing side of thing to only be in the hunter. If the next reserves in North America, they need to add blue catfish for sure. That's a tough one to, to gauge where they might go because there's so much they could do. I mean, really anywhere. There's so much they could do with it. White sturgeon or lake sturgeon? Lake sturgeon must be the specific one I'm thinking of. Is that the same thing as a white sturgeon? I want to catch one little shovel nose before we're done. I think we will. Keep on scooting up. Me and my son, love your vids. Thanks for including the Call of the Wild game to us. Uh, you make us laugh so hard. Well, very happy to introduce the game to you guys. Glad you're enjoying it, and thanks for watching the videos as well. They should change it up and add a lasso to the hunter so we can catch and release deer. <laughs> you can do that in uh, in Red Dead. They already, they already cornered the market on the lasso and catch and release. They want them to be associated at some point. I It's never going to happen. It's not. But I so wish that we could just have the trophy log just combined between those two games. Something chasing us. There we go. Surely is not a sturgeon because it's too, like, thick. Sturgeon are kind of long and slender, the shovel nose. Let's bring this guy up out of there. Legs are bigger, I think, and I want proper big boy muskies. The, oh, muskies, sorry. I was, what was that, a largemouth? All right, didn't expect that. Hey, gold largemouth, we'll take it. Gets us a gold token. If we can catch one gold per outing, I'm happy. Eventually, you know, some diamonds would be nice, but gotta start somewhere. Lake Surgeon get up to 8 feet? Yeah, those are the ones I'm thinking of then. Oh, anyway, the, the big boy muskies thing. I was thinking you were talking about pike for some reason. Yeah, some like 7, 8 foot musky too? Be awesome. That falls into that category I was talking about. Like, start with those sorts of things. The sturgeon, the musky, the uh, Wells catfish. There's a lot they could do. I'm excited for this game. I really am. It felt like it was almost on life support for a while. Just It just didn't... It wasn't quite there, but they've made strides to where, like, I feel like they're really moving in the right direction. The community has embraced the game. The the work that has gone into these spreadsheets, it just, it says to me that there's, like, a passionate community behind it. What's a good hook for big channels? Um, I can, I'll give you the information off the spreadsheet because I might be incorrect. I would guess if you want a big one, you're probably looking at like a size two, but I'll pull that up exactly when you bring this cast in, just in case any sturgeon or anybody want to come and hit this. Something just splashed right beside us. Can't see what it was. All right, uh, let me pull up the catfish. 
Okay, so size two is basically where it starts with golds, meaning silvers and bronze won't hit it. If you want a diamond, you want a one on. Now, I need to clarify when I say that. You can catch a diamond catfish on the smallest hook possible. However, what you're mostly gonna get is small fish attracted to that. So use the big hook, it's only going to attract the bigger fish. If you're looking for a gold, I'd start with that size too. You're in the game, oh nice. Hoping for bottom fishing, carp, wells catfish, arapaima. Oh, arapaima is what I've been talking about in the Amazon, yeah. There's, there's so much, so much potential. I think it's easier in a fishing game than maybe a hunting game, like as far as making reserves and stuff that makes sense. Because it almost, like, while you do want as many unique fish and new fish species and all that as possible, more repeats isn't a bad thing. Like, I want brown trout from over in Norway. I want them here on uh, Golden Ridge Reserve. I want to see, you know, the, wherever there's cross species that can be on both maps, I want them to be on both. The more fish species in the water, to me, the better. I like the variety. I like to not know what I'm going to catch. Like that bass we just caught. Certainly did not expect that. I do think this is like a diamond bass area. Pretty sure this is a hot spot for them. Giraffe Kings apologizes for September 11th theme. But yeah, they had like all the New York teams winning or something. I don't know about. I don't know what they were doing with that one. They could do breeding color for the map. Yeah, um, I don't know if this is exactly where you're going, but unique patterns and stuff on the fish. I think that's a big next step too. Like imagine you catch like a regular looking diamond rainbow trout, right? I mean, uh, golden rainbows are a thing. Those sorts of things could, could come into it. But some unique patterns, maybe like scars and stuff. Somebody mentioned missing eyes and all these things earlier. They could do a lot to really make them unique. How's fishing going? Not bad, dude. We actually just landed a gold largemouth, which I'm absolutely thrilled with. Up to seven gold tokens now on Golden Ridge. I feel like we could, we should probably have more gold tokens than we do. But what happens every time is I see fish. They're not hitting my gold. Sorry, they're not hitting my lure. Meaning they're probably not golds. So I go down a size to try to catch them. Got a little pike coming out of there. Or potentially a small tiger muskie. How do I catch the gold burbot at the lake? Um, so I don't think they spawn mission fish anymore. They may have changed the way that works. What I would do is refer to the spreadsheet where I can get you the, the hook size needed. And it will probably just take you a bunch of casts. When you're looking for like particularly big fish, golds and diamonds, um, it's a lot of a patience game. But the, uh, the recommended hook size for a gold burbot is size 4. So I would throw a size 4 hook on. Um, whatever bait they like we can look that up let's open up the handbook burbit which we haven't caught here on golden ridge yet liver shad and redworm i'd throw a liver on a size four hook and just keep on throwing it in different areas like maybe you try it out here for a little bit if you don't get a bite turn 30 degrees to your left try out there move around a little bit eventually you'll get one to hit you will it just can take some time little baby fish that could be a sturgeon actually i thought it was a tiny pike but it was very long and slender an alaska map would be awesome that was the point of uh doing yukon today i said at the very beginning of the stream like king salmon sockeye salmon uh, there's there's way more like the trout species that are up there too i i just think alaska could be an awesome map in this game yeah that's a pike still no such shovel nose sturgeon yet i get back here do you have a link for that spreadsheet? Um, I don't at the moment. It's in the official um, Call the Wild the Angler Discord. What I need to do is shoot somebody a message over there and ask if I can host those spreadsheets in my Discord. Just because that's a little less complicated than trying to send people over the place. But I don't want to be like, hey, I have these spreadsheets that I have nothing to do with. Pike are just too much on this map. They are kind of everywhere. I wouldn't mind if they were a little more limited to a certain couple of areas. You find that with, look, there's a couple of species, like the pike on this map, the Atlantic salmon on Norway, 
they hit almost anything, much like this one does right here. And it can make it difficult. That's a bigger one. It can make it difficult to catch the specific fish you're targeting. But I, I enjoy that side of the challenge, too. Like, if I really wanted a sturgeon, I could maybe look through different baits and stuff that the pike don't care for as much and only use those ones that sturgeon will hit and pike don't. But, I kind of, I like fishing this way more. I like when, like, hey, I'm after a, a gold sturgeon, but if I'm catching silver pike and, you know, gold largemouth and stuff along the way, awesome. Like, I do want to be catching fish. I don't want it to take forever. Well, not a half pounder, we'll take it. Arctic grayling? Ooh, true. Arctic char could be in Alaska. That was the reason, that's like the one fish that I really fell in love with over on Norway. Arctic char were one of the fish you caught a lot of in the Alaskan Adventures um, Cabela's hunting game. They had Cabela's, or sorry, they had hunting and fishing in that series. And I kind of wish they were, you know, on another map. There's a couple things I like on Norway. I much prefer the, the species here. But I just think Arctic Char are awesome. How much longer is the stream going to go? Like 10 minutes. Dolly Var I remember those from Alaskan Adventures. I don't even have a clue what it is, but I remember that's a fish. <laughs> that's, that's about as much as I can say on that. That, in fact, is a fish. I love the perch on Norway. Oh my goodness, the models? Top tier. Like, some of the best models in the game. Those European perch are beautiful. They get big, too. Catching pike for days. I think we gotta try a different spot if we want to surge him. Pull up that spreadsheet again as we're just catching absolute babies. Sturgeon. Let's try uh I want somewhere I can fast travel to. Up here should work. It's a species of trout? Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I, I can't remember what they look like at all, but I know that name. As soon as I read it, I was like, that's something you can catch in Alaskan Adventures. Let's see if we pull out of here. Uh, Logan, thanks for becoming a shooty, by the way. Good to have you here. Very much appreciate that. Look at the emotes being used already. I love to see it. Tigerfish are some of the best in the game. The tiger muskies, they're, they're really good models. Love that they added them. Got a 17 pound Xander, not a bad deal. I don't think we've quite topped 10 pounds yet. No such sturgeon on our first cast. If we get one, it should be a gold. Oh boy. Thought we were going to fall in. So targeting a gold is eliminating a lot of fish from biting. What is that? That's a nice fish, whatever it was. If it doesn't hit this... That's a walleye. And he's hitting this. Alright, good deal. Not sure that's quite a gold walleye, because they look giant in the water every time, but if it is, like... The mission kind of succeeded, because we're after a nocturnal fish. Nope. Almost 8 pounds. I think 10-ish is gold. Big fan of the walleye. I love them. There's not many fish in this game where I'm like, yeah, they're just, they're just there. Some of the, like, docile species on Norway, like the bream and the eyed and stuff, they're cool. I like them. But I mostly enjoy fishing for, like, the aggressive species more, the stuff that will hit lures. Pretty much everything on Golden Ridge. Other than... Do mountain whitefish hit lures? They might not. Why does a fish go to medical school to become a sturgeon? Oh. We gotta tag out by Friday and spend the weekend fishing on the lake? Dude, that would be... That'd be pretty cool. Halibut would be cool? I think they should add them just for the halibut, really. That was worse than Danny's joke. Oh, we're on... Speed one. No wonder we're never getting this here. Was that a big sauger or am I dumb? 50 50 chance I'm dumb, but I swear I just saw a huge sauger jump way out here. Could have been a walleye too, but it was pretty brown. It was like 
And I think it would hit this, but I'm not certain. It's like right out there. But I might throw as a minnow instead if we don't get a hit on this. I think there could be Sogger in these waters. <laughs> Brutal joke. It, was, it wasn't great. Dumb no, <laughs> blind maybe. <laughs> could be that too. You want a constant source of goldfish? Go to the Gold Pass Ghost Town area. They're all Sogger's that are all gold? Really? If we had more than five minutes left in the stream, I'd go and give that a shot. Pretty small hook on this, so whatever that was, it's a minnow. Almost everything gets them. Should be able to see something. Go get that. Gold musky? Nice. Still only have one of those. We got them on the last stream, I think. My favorite are very simple fish, the largemouth bass, bluegill, and whitefish. I like basic looking fish. Oh yeah, and the lake trout. I mean, yeah, lake trout are hard to beat. They're pretty awesome. No arguments there. I think Sauger hit minnows, right? Yeah. This is the one thing I have a diamond of, by the way. Not literally the one, but it was the only one I caught a diamond of early on that felt like legit. Golden Trout were completely screwed up. I did catch a diamond rainbow early on, too. Any brook trout in this game? There are, yeah. I think they get up to like eight and a half pounds. Pretty good sized. Alright, if they don't like us, or whatever that is doesn't like us, let's scoot up uh, maybe to this bridge. Might be where we caught our big walleye last time. Give it a couple of minutes from up there. Yeah, I get your ultra. I, I don't find that to be the case in, in the angler, at least not yet. I haven't gotten to the point that I catch goals and I'm just like, oh, okay. What would you say is the most challenging diamond on this map? I would say, I mean, there's a lot of diamonds I don't have. I would say probably something like Burbot, because they're only nighttime active. That's that's one place where maybe the angler still needs to change. They have, everything's server-based. And um, I wanted to check if we could actually get to that bridge. Everything's server-based, so the time is tied to the server. So you can't change the time. And if you, like, you know, right now maybe we want to catch walleye and shovel no sturgeon and stuff. Well, if we can't change the time, and it's 12 o'clock, we're gonna have to just fish for something else, or we gotta sit here for, like, three, four hours until it gets to be nighttime in game. Or, I guess, like, try to join another server, but basically, whatever I want to fish for, I get the opposite time. If I'm fishing for a legendary, you can bet the first 12 multiplayer servers I get in are gonna be night. Just happens. If I do want to go for Walleye or Xander or Sauger or whatever, every server is going to be like 10 o'clock in the morning. Just the way it goes. Going on day two of trying to get Sidewinder spot one? Man, I'm telling you what, I have like eight hours trying to catch him this time. It just hasn't, hasn't worked out for me. Let's throw this right out in the middle of here maybe. If we can catch one more fish, I'll be satisfied. 19 pound gold musky, nice. How big do they get? I'm surprised that's not a diamond. It's not something surface over there. It is getting a little dark. I feel like I'm always at nighttime in my servers. I want daytime. That's, that's what I feel like. I saw it though, um, I think it was in the official Angler Discord. Somebody, I don't know what they caught, a diamond, walleye, sturgeon, I'm not exactly sure. But the like comment underneath it was like, oh nice, I never get nighttime servers. And I was like, what? I only get nighttime servers and I don't want them. What's up, King Patriot? Did I watch any football games yesterday? I did, I watched, I watched all the Steeler game, which was unfortunate. 
I watched the ending of... What the heck game was that? Oh, the Patriots-Eagles game. Watched a little bit of Chargers-Dolphins. What 4 o'clock game did I watch? I couldn't get the Bears-Packers one to work. I saw some of it. I can't remember the 4 o'clock game that I did. A wa I watched the Sunday night game, too. Best fish for money grinding at level 25? Could probably be Lake Trout, to be honest. At level 25, you can... You can handle some pretty big fish, so I would say, like, it. You gain credits and XP based on the weight of the fish, essentially. So the bigger the fish that you can catch relatively consistently, the better. Uh, Atlantic Salmon, actually, over on Norway is probably even better. Do the favors of the Wardens do anything? You get reputation, which actually is necessary to buy some of the, like, best equipment in the game. Miami and LA was the game of the day. Yeah, I wish I wish I could have watched the entire thing. They, I, it was something I couldn't get on. Was it a one o'clock game? It was right, so I couldn't watch the game during the Steeler game anyway. But they also didn't have it uh, broadcasting in the area. But I got it on YouTube TV somehow at the end of it. Best fish for money grinding at level thirteen. Maybe like pike? If you actively target like smaller pike? Maybe 8, 10 pounders? What it all comes down to is targeting the biggest fish that you can catch consistently and reel in relatively quickly. Like you don't want 20 minute fights every time you hook a fish. Because you could grind for lake trout at level 13. But if you don't have the equipment to handle like an average sized lake trout, you're just going to get into these super long fights every single time, and that's not really what you want for money and XP grinding. So I'd look for, you know, depending on your equipment, probably, yeah, like, good-sized pike, those sorts of things. I think we're going to go with a bait fishing setup, honestly. We got to be able to land something. One more fish, that's all I ask. I don't like that zoom in view from there. Later, Captain Murray. Appreciate you stopping in. There are just some spots that are glitched with baits, like using swim bait at the dam, popper and frog at the cove, main lake, and jigs at the bottom left. Uh, glitched how so? I got a little something down there. I can't tell what that is. It was taking some line, though. What the heck was that? Gotta be like an okay walleye. I, I saw the outline of it. It wasn't a long slender fish. It's no sturgeon or pike or anything. Ooh, okay. I usually don't like going to 100% on the drag. We're not doing anything at 95% though. Thick walleye, maybe? Don't know what else this could be, but I like it as our last fish. If you go try it, it's an automatic catch. You got 14 levels of one day. That's crazy. Larry has what a hook in it in his bottom lip. He does like a big circle hook. Or how about a rare lure someone lost in a fish's lip? Yeah, kind of. I see what you're saying. Like with uh, with Larry, you should be able to keep the lure when you get it. Some kind of, like, maybe a lure good for catching big fish. Wait a minute, is that actually a pike? I'm going to be sad if this is a pike. No. It's a catfish. Still, got to be a, a good one to put up this kind of fight. Can't land the thing. Come here. Last fish of the day. You got to cooperate. Oh, come on. We just about had it. Right there, no. Right there, no. Come on. Oh, it's the worst. It's just, it's right there. It's not even fighting. It's just, it won't let us get it. I'm lifting this up as high as we can go. <laughs> Look what it's doing to the rod. Listen, game. 
I'd like to catch my fish now, if that's okay. Oh, thank you. All I gotta do is ask nicely. Wow. <laughs> nice lighting we have here. Eight powder. I thought he's gonna be bigger than that. We'll take it, though. Had a little, uh... Variance in the fish we caught today. One more gold, largemouth bass. But that's always fun. What do we end up killing? We shot an egg white wolf in Call of Duty. Wow, we got ourselves a gold largemouth. I'd say that is a pretty good excursion doing some hunting and fishing. This is something we're going to do a lot more of. I really enjoy, like, the chill aspect of doing this in videos or streams. I've got two videos coming out this week in which we're doing hunting and fishing. And that'll be something we definitely continue in the streams as well. But anyway. That is going to do it for this stream. So as always, thank you guys for watching it. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for all the support. And I will see you in tomorrow's video.